polyglots are these really cool files where you have a single file that's valid to two completely different specs. In CTFs in the past, I've run into a GIF image that was also a DOS slash MBR file, um, a PNG that was also valid HTML, um, a script that was valid in both C and Python, and uh, a binary that was both .NET and like a standard executable. Um, but today, I've got this really neat JavaScript file. It's actually a real piece of malware that drops an executable. Uh, and it turns out it's a polyglot. Um, it's a both valid JavaScript and a bat file. So we're going to take a look and dive into that. Um, I've got the file here open in VS Code. And you can see here on the side, there's just, you know, in the mini map, it's got just a few sections. Really. We can see there's some kind of a green section up here, a huge block here, another green section, and another block. Um, if we actually, let's see, uh, Alt-Z to turn line wrapping off. And now it gets very simple. Um, in fact, there's only 34 lines. Um, there's these, this starts off with a comment in JavaScript, and it actually goes all the way to line 33. So the first 33 out of 34 lines, comment. And then we have this one long line of JavaScript. And if we un, if we unwrap uh, it and go down here, um, you know, I guess we can just to here. Uh, it's, it's some complicated JavaScript. And so to be completely honest, when I first ran into this, my first gut response was, I don't want to deal with this. I'm going to try to find it in the sandbox. And I actually found uh, this any run. Uh, sandbox run. And what's cool about any run is you can come over here and see it's probably it's probably a little small. I wonder if I can make it bigger. Uh, sort of. Um, you can see the so it's so we have the process tree and w script starts the temp.unc.js and then that calls cmd copy itself. Look like you can get the details. Uh, yeah, we will agree. Uh, it's actually calling copy on itself to another file called rich pair.bat. So it's literally copying itself into a bat file. And that's where I went, oh wow, this is actually a polyglot. Um, and I'm going to stop right here and go back because I want to go figure out what's what's happening. Um, so as a JavaScript, it's all this JavaScript is obfuscated to literally just do that copy um, and run the bat. So then what does this mean if we look at it as a bat? Let's, let's go back here and get rid of this uh, or do unwrapping so we can see the thing. Well, as a bat file, we're going to kind of, this is just going to error out and do nothing and continue. Um, same thing with line 28 here, uh, line 33 and line 34. Um, they're going to, bat is very uh, error Tolerant, so it's going to just move right through, continue. It's not going to care. There's 26 lines here, lines 2 through 27, which are sending these variables, advisor rake letters matter is equal to n, advisor rake fantastic porter is equal to k. Um, it's not a coincidence there's 26 of these. There's 26 letters. Um, each of these variables is getting a letter. And then down here, we have the variable advisor rake count field d. Uh, we can actually double click on that and see that's actually going to become a c. Uh, this one right here. Uh, a D. So actually, this first one right here, CD into temp. So like, we're starting to see a batch file build up here. So what I'm actually going to do, let's see, we're going to grab these four lines. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, control shift P, toggle off the minimap because we don't need that for now. We don't need this. We're going to open up a, let's split right and open up a new file and paste these four lines in. And what we're going to do is we're going to start, we're just going to real quickly, and I might, I might speed the video up as this gets going, but we're going to grab this first one, right? And if we do a control F or percent paste percent, we'll find, well, in this case, there's one case of an N. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to put N, and uh, I forget, what is it? Control, control, alt, enter. And boom, all, all the cases of advisor, uh, advisor, rake, letters, matter have become N. So I can grab the next one here, copy, paste, uh, no results, so there's no K, so I don't have to worry about that. I can copy paste here. This is going to be the S's. Uh, Control Alt Enter, they're all gone. Um, and this is like slightly tedious, but I mean, 26 times is not uh, not that many times here, so let's we'll just do them all. Um, we're already getting through these. Uh, there's, this one's going to be an M. Control Alt Enter. We've already done C. Have we already done C? No, we haven't done C. Uh, C. Oops, put a C there. Control Alt Enter, um, and I'll probably speed through me doing the rest of these because watching me copy and paste is not that interesting. Uh, so I will uh, talk to you in a moment. All right, and here I am pasting in the last one of these B. Um, did pay attention to what I'm doing, and uh, we're done here. Um, I just did 26 ones. I don't know how long did that take, a minute or two? I mean, again, it was annoying and probably not good videos, why I'm going to speed through some of it, but it's not not too bad. And look, we have this, this whole thing is simplified down to go into the temp directory and echo something. Doesn't, doesn't matter. 
find string, this is basically like grep, so we're going to find the string uh, adverse rake, and on any line that has, the dash V basically says remove those lines, give me the lines that don't have reverse rake. What's cool about that is adverse rake, adverse rake, if, you, if we look at that string, it is on every line except line 28. So basically we're going to take line 28 and put it into jumpy flame. Uh, then we're going to call cert util on it with a file to decode jumpy flame into rosecomb.dsl, and we're going to echo adverse rake. Uh, I'm guessing these echoes are here just to make sure the string adverse rake explicitly is on each line, so this line doesn't get put into the base64 decode. Um, now, it's all over the place, but it's just like being extra careful, right? Uh, and so once we do that, we've now created this DLL, and we're going to call it with uh, regserv32, and that's going to start the malware. So um, that's it. I just thought this. I just thought this polyglot was super cool. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it buys you. It's got this very obfuscated JavaScript. But why? What's the benefit to then switching to to polyglot over to Bat? I don't know. It creates doesn't create more files. I guess so. If the first one gets through, the second one's going to get through. Um, don't know. And I guess it's just maybe it's easier to call. Maybe, maybe in this case, actually, because it's just calling a Bat file, that's less risky than it would be to call these. You know, reg serve, cert util, these are kind of known um, living off the land binaries. So uh, maybe that's why they do this. But uh, yeah. So anyway, I'm going to call it here. Um, if you're interested in more of like where this came from or where it's going, um, I've got a full blog post up. Um, it's actually part of the inladen Sherlock from Hack the Box. So go check that out. I'll put links in the uh, description here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.